Hey, this video is part of a short little series just demonstrating some software I wrote and basically it's a template for creating 2D games using Phaser 2D and HTML5 utilizing JavaScript. Now, uh, again, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation somewhere in this video, hopefully, that will bring you to the full playlist. I recommend watching the first video or two before this one uh, to get a quick overview of what the project is before we dive into the code. And this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial on creating games. I would love to do step-by-step -step tutorials on creating some simple games using Phaser 2D, um, but the videos I make are to decided by my Patreon supporters and what they want to see. So if you want to see that, consider becoming a Patreon supporter by going to patreon.com forward slash x 1000 There should be a link in the description. And that way you have more of a say and a vote on what gets done. But again, this will just be an overview. Uh, and even if you decide to use this template, I do recommend learning Phaser 2D beforehand uh, and creating a very simple, you know, one page games here and there. This template uh, does a lot of stuff for you creating, you know, a load screen, a main menu screen, an info screen, you know, uh, a pre-game, uh, pre-level page, uh, the level page, and you know, an exit screen. So you don't want to get into all that before you learn the basics. It's going to be a lot. And again, we're just going to go over a quick overview on what the template is here as far as the code. If you go to um, GitHub.com forward slash metalx1000, my name, my username is metalx1000, you should be able to click on repositories and search through my repositories. Right now it's at the top, but it may not when you go to find it. You'll have to search through my repositories. It's called Phaser Game Template. You can click on there, you can see the code, and as I showed in the previous video, you can get a live view of what it looks like by clicking on here. It's the latest version is always up on my website. Now, you can click download to download the zip file, but I'm going to use git to pull it down. So I'm going to copy that URL, go into my shell here, and in my folder that my web server is hosting, I'm going to say git clone and the name of that URL. It's under three megabytes at this point, and most of that size is due to music and images. Uh, the code itself is very small. You can see that it's not very big at all. Um, again, if I've mentioned this in previous videos, you don't need a web server to run this. If you try to run it just as a file in your web browser, most web browsers will block you and not let you run the game. You'll get you know files not found due to cross-site, blah, blah, blah. There's um, options you can pass to Chrome, and I'm sure other browsers as well, to bypass that little security thing. But I do recommend running it on a web server. Um, setting up a web server takes... If you're on Linux, you probably already have one installed. You just have to run a command. I've done series on that before in the past. If you're on Windows, you might have to, might take you five minutes to ten minutes to get one set up. Uh, and if you're on uh, Mac OS, you have Python installed and probably other options as well. But as I showed in previous videos, if you look through my previous videos on setting up servers using uh, web servers using Python, so you should be set, be able to get a web server up and running in, in 10 seconds if you know what you're doing on most operating systems. But however you decide to do it, I'm using Apache here. I'm going to go into the actual project here. And let's go back to our web browser. I'm going to go to my local host and the folder that it's in. Click here, and the game starts up. By default, it's in vertical mode, you know, portrait mode here. Uh, if I click anywhere inside the game, it goes full screen, but still in vertical mode. I can mute the music if I need to. Let's go ahead and look at changing that so that it, in case you want it to be you know, wide, you know, I have it set up here kind of like for holding a tablet or a phone, um, which you can also do in landscape mode. But let's say you want your game mainly to be a widescreen game. Let's go ahead and go back into our code here. And if we go into our main directory here, there is an index.html, which is a rather short HTML file with some basic header stuff here, you know, loading up a favorites icon, the title of the page, some JavaScripts. These right here are all the scripts I wrote that are the actual template that we load up. They're different scenes, your, your boot screen, your preloader, game template, you know, the actual game and level, game over, info, and all that stuff. Some basic CSS to allow it to go full screen without any borders. And then down here is a short little JavaScript and uh, that load up functions from the JavaScripts that I wrote. But we're also going to see here, as you can see here, it's loading up the phaser game based on variables for height and width. And right here, if we want to change it to our landscape rather than vertical mode, we can comment out that line, 
uncomment this line, and you can change the resolutions to whatever you want. I'm going to save that and exit out of my text editor. By the way, I'm using Vim, but you can use whatever text editor you prefer. Now, if I was to go back here and press F5 to refresh this, you notice it's still in vertical mode here. That's because I do have a manifest file set up with this project. What a manifest file does is it tells your browser, here, save all these files. Only update if this manifest file changes. This allows you to run the game in offline mode. You can close your browser, come back later. As long as you haven't cleared out your cache, the game can play, be played offline at any time once it's been loaded. Now, so here's the manifest file. We can have a quick look at that. I mean, that would be a whole topic for a whole nother thing. Is Basically, it's just caching any file you tell it to in here. And one of those files is the index file. So it doesn't matter if I change, delete, whatever that index file. If your browser has run it, it's already going to run it now. And it goes based on a version number here. Now, what I can do, you could go in there and change the version number, but I do have an update button here, or update script, a bash script. So you're going to have to be on a system that has a shell, a bash shell, for this little script to work. But basically, besides changing the manifest file, if you add other files, this script's going to search through all the directories and add any images and sounds and scripts that you add. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in dot slash update sh. It's been updated, and now if I go back here, I can hit F5 to refresh. There you go. I had to do it twice for some reason the first time it didn't take. That happens sometimes with manifest files, um, but now you can see the game is in a widescreen format. Again, mute that music. Um, so any changes you make, be sure to run that update script or manually update the manifest file. I just made that little script to make things easy on you. That's the whole point of a template. Let's go back here, control L to clear the screen, and let's go ahead and look at our files here. If we go into the data folder, there's uh, two files here, images and info.js. Let's have a look at the info.js. And if you look in here, it's a very simple JSON array um, with some text and URL. The text, this first one says game template by Chris Acapinti, and then there's a URL of films by Chris. There's a license line, and there's the GPL for that, or the um, URL for that. And there's the source code, and there's a URL for that. And if you haven't figured it out yet, this is the info screen. If we go back to our browser here and click info, you can see it says game template by Chris Acapinti. You know, the licenses, the source code is music by and more games. You don't see any of the URLs because they happen when you click. So if I click on that one, it brings me to Films by Chris. So this allows you to not have to go in to the code and find all that. You just modify that JSON file. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go in here. I'll just change this. I'll just change it so instead of Chris Acapinti, I'll change it to my screen name, which is Metal X 1000. Save that. And if we come in here, even if we refresh a few times, info, you can still see it says Chris Ackmanty, and that's again because of that manifest file. So let's go back to our shell here, go back to the main directory here and type in update.sh. It updates our manifest file. I'm going to refresh the screen twice here just to be sure. If I go info, you can see it now says Metal X 1000. So remember, any change you make, run that update script. Um, now, going back to our code here, let's go ahead and have a look around. Let's see. Uh, now, most of our main code is going to be under our JSON, or JS, or sorry, our, our JavaScript folder. So, again, we have our boot. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at that. That's very simple. It's basically our load screen. It's going to create a load animation here of a certain size. Uh, and Basically, that's an up, a rotating cube, which at this point is actually a progress bar as well. That's something I need to change to where there's the rotating cube and a progress bar. But it's functional, and there's something on the screen letting someone know that the game is running. And I do have a console output saying that the game is loading for, you know, checking that stuff. Now, next, it's going to run the, well, if you look at it again, you know, it's going to start state. What state is going to start? The preload, which was called preload in our index file, if you remember. But if you go here, there's a preload JS. And this is going to preload a lot of our images and a lot of our music and sounds so that they're ready to go. They're already downloaded and ready to go. It's not like 
you click on something that's supposed to make a sound and you gotta wait for it to download. So this is gonna preload everything here, which is already on your system thanks to the manifest file, but it's gonna load it from you know, your hard drive, from your storage into your uh, RAM and have it ready to go. Um, so something like this sound, there's only one sound listed there, but I'll give you an example of some sprites. I put some of the stuff in arrays so you don't have to. So like here I'm loading two different um, player screens here, but let's say you have a couple of sprites, animated uh, images that are uh, each frame is a 64 by 64. That's why I has set this loop up for. So I called it sprite 64 and created that array. If we um, exit out of here, let me start up my file browser here, and go up and go to our R ES file, which is our resource files. Click in here, you can see the you know the brick icon that's repeated for the ground level and a bunch of our our text and animations here. But we have sprites here. We have a few. We have five. These two are larger, the front view of the character, which if I haven't already stated is a character I created in Blender, so it's actually 3D, but I render out as a 2D character. Um, but ones that each frame are 64 by 64 are our mute button, our player walking, and our player 2 walking, which is the same thing, just tinted blue. So, which can actually be done in the code, but I think at this point you're better off doing it this way because some browsers have issues with that, trying to change the color stuff, plus you need to use um, bitmaps for that to work, I believe. Anyway, looking back at our code, you can see those three... Um, sprite names right there. So we have mute, player, and player two. Player, player two, and mute doesn't matter the order. It's going to loop through those, and what it's doing here is going to create a sprite sheet for each of those, and it's going to give it the name, which is the name in the variable. So the first one would be player, and the next one would be player two, and the next one would be mute. It's going to say, okay, it's in the res resource sprites folder. It's going to be called that, so player, player two, player, or mute, that dot .png, which is what they are named, and each frame is 64 by 64. So I created loops like that for different things to help you streamline stuff. So let's say you added another player or another sprite that is 64 by 64 for each frame. You can just come in here and let's say it was a bad guy. You can say comma bad guy, if that's what you named the file. Save that, update, and it will load that file. You don't have to create a line for each one. That's just something I did in there to move things along. You also see the music loading here and, you know, the progress bar starting here. So that's just a quick look at that. I'm not going to save any of that here. Um, and again, this is a quick overview, so I'm just going to show you a little bit more. But we'll go ahead and have a look at um, the title screen. So we'll go Vim into game title. You can see here that we're loading up the different sprites. Um, this one's the game title, which if we go back into our game here and go to our main screen, that would be this My Fun Game here. And so for a lot of that, you don't have to worry about the code. If you're going, just going to have a title screen like this, and you want the title screen to look like that, you have three different things here. You have uh, My Fun Game, Play, Info, and you just want to change the title and change the font, you can just create new uh, PNGs and replace the old ones. If you don't like the look of this mute button, you just create a new PNG, you know, and replace it. So a lot of that stuff on screens like this is just going to be replacing, you know, the PNGs. Um, I do have the character going here as an animation. Uh, that is also in this code here. So you can see, as far as updating, for each update, it's moving the position of each player. Player one or player two, you know, whether they're going left or right. Um, creating some buttons here. Uh, loading. I do want to point out, if you do just change the image of this, this does link to the gentleman who made the music for the game. Uh, so that's a button there. You can change that here. You just change the URL if you want that to link to something else. Um, here is loading the players. Uh, to load the players, I created this function, and you pass it a few different things, uh, you know, like the position, the X, Y position, and the direction, uh, and what type of player it is, whether it's player one or player two. And, you know, this is set up for those particular sprites, 
but you can just modify, you know, the number of frames here and how fast you want them to move, and you're probably going to want them to loop if they're going to be walking like that. So that's that code. Again, there is a lot more to this entire game uh, template, but I just want to give you an overview of it. Again, something I would like, I would love to do more tutorials on, but again, all my tutorials are based on votes from my Patreon viewers, and so far this isn't a big interest for the few Patreon supporters I have. Um, so, but I thought I would share this if you already are familiar with uh, Phaser 2D, and if you're not, I rec and you want to make 2D games, I do recommend it. Lots of code out there, lots of, um, it's, it's great, it's greatly documented. Um, I've done videos talking about their documentation before. I recommend you check it out. Once you get past the basics and you feel comfortable creating a small game, then you can utilize this template to get your basic game going so you don't have to write the same mind-numbing stuff that's done over and over again at the beginning of this game design. Um, it's all set up for you here with simple scripts to um, update stuff. So. Again, as always, uh, I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you're enjoying these videos. I hope that you have a great day. As always, please share, like, and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. And uh, as always, visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day.